so this is going to be a pretty quick video just reviewing the actual colors that you get with some of the more popular camouflage paint that you can find uh, at your local hardware store or on Amazon. Um, and specifically, I really want to focus on some of the green colors because whether you're doing either dioramas or miniatures or models, or if you're doing stuff for hunting or any type of use where you need a good flat, more subdued camouflage style color or pattern, uh, these are most of the paints that, that you're probably going to end up using. And it's always good to know what do the colors actually look like uh, coming out of the spray paint can. So some of these are pretty straightforward. So we're going to have Rust-Oleum Black. I'm going to look at a flat red primer from Rust-Oleum. We're going to have Earth Brown, also from Rust-Oleum. We're going to have the Camo Khaki Rust-Oleum color. Now for the greens, we're going to have the Rust-Oleum Camo Army Green, another Rust-Oleum Green, the Deep Forest Green, a Olive Drab from Hunter's Specialties. These are available on Amazon. And another one that I found at Lowe's, this is a matte Spanish moss color from Krylon. Now also in this video, you'll see that I have an x right color checker, and this is so that you can actually, if you want, grab a still and really compare the colors that you're seeing on the screen um, to some calibrated colors. Again, because you know color is pretty important, it's really hard to capture in photos and videos, and so this should kind of help if you're looking at this to be a little bit more careful with the color comparison uh, to see if you're trying to match one thing or another, or to, to really get a, a better perspective on what the hues are. So uh, I've just got some corrugated white poster board or plastic board here. This is usually used for things like yard signs and stuff like that. And so I'm going to paint this and then we'll look at what each one of these colors looks like. And some of the things I've found regarding the actual flatness and reflectivity of the finishes. All right, so we've got the painting finished and let's take a quick look at the colors. And I'm going to start um, with the non-green colors. And so at the top right, we've got the Rust-Oleum Black. And below that, uh, below the black at the top will be the camo earth brown. Then we've got flat primer red and lastly the rust-oleum khaki at the bottom. Um, the reason I included the primer is for this particular comparison showing that the dark brown really is a truly dark brown um, and some patterns that people may want to do. Again, if you're doing scale modeling or replicas um, a lot of like World War II camos had more of a mud brown that has kind of a lot of red in it. Um, and so the, the flat red primer actually does a pretty good job of being on that kind of darker browner side of red. And it can mimic a little bit of that, that, um, that mud brown. And especially like if you layer um, the dark brown with the red a little bit, you can actually... Uh, probably get a little bit closer to that, that mud brown look. The black is just a pretty straightforward uh, ultra matte. All the Rust-Oleum paints, by the way, do an exceptionally good job of actually being flat. Um, totally non-reflective, no sheen on any of those. Now, a couple of the other things I wanted to point out is uh, so that khaki color. Um, here, I have a, uh, a little handguard piece uh, made by BCM. Uh, this is what they call flat dark earth, and I did want to point out that khaki color is pretty close to a flat dark earth, not quite. And I've also got some actual Levi's chinos that are khaki. Um, again, if we're doing a khaki color comparison, let's use a true khaki. So here you can see that flat dark earth piece of trim. It is maybe just a little more brown than the khaki. Um, but pretty close on color. So if you're looking to replicate like a FD, that's pretty close. And then here is the actual khaki material. Um, this has been washed a little bit and kind of what you'll see is the khaki is a little bit darker, a bit more brown, but a pretty close uh, approximation. Now I also wanted to point out again for that brown. Um, so this is some uh, Sitka. Uh, this is a hunting shirt in one of their patterns. 
And so this is where that brown I did want to show. It is quite a bit darker um, than like a, a light brown. It's a very dark brown. Um, and so that's where this, uh, this dark red primer um, actually does a pretty good job sometimes on some of, again, the, uh, the German World War II camo patterns uh, tend to have a bit of a mud brown color in them that's got a lot of red. Um, and so that, that may be useful. And uh, it is exceptionally flat also. Uh, again, totally dead flat. None of these Rust-Oleum colors have any reflectivity basically at all. All right, so next up, let's look at the greens. Um, at the very top left, that's going to be the Rust-Oleum Deep Forest Green. Right below it, we have the Olive Drab um, from Hunter Specialties. Next one down, we have the Krylon Matte Spanish Moss. Uh, you can see that this paint actually has quite a bit of sheen. Uh, it's advertised as matte. Um, it is definitely not nearly as flat as the rest of the paints. And then at the bottom, we've got the Rust-Oleum Camo Army Green at the very bottom. So on these, again, uh, greens, there's a lot of different greens and camo patterns. And so this was just something I wanted to do to show uh, the variations that you get with these paints. Um, because, you know, green's such a dominant color uh, if you're doing camouflage or, again, military replicas. Um, miniatures, dioramas, or again, if you're painting your own hunting equipment, things like that. So uh, at the top left, again, you get the Rust-Oleum and below that, the Hunter Specialty. And I would say those two are almost exactly the same color. Um, the Hunter Specialties may have just a touch more saturation. It's gonna be just a bit greener. Um, you can see the caps, it looks a little more saturated. Uh, when the paint's actually applied though, the difference is exceptionally slight. Um, so I would more or less consider these to be the same. And quite frankly, it's much easier to find the Rust-Oleum uh, and it is much cheaper and it actually paints a lot easier. This stuff covers really well. Um, so I don't know, it's me. I would just get this. I wouldn't worry about the Hunter Specialties uh, Olive Drab. It's not really worth considering. Um, now down at the bottom, you see the Army Green, and that's a pretty good lighter green. Uh, there are a lot of patterns that have lighter shades of green in them. It's still exceptionally flat, as all the Rust-Oleum camo colors and the primer was. Um, you know, I didn't really like the, the Krylon at all. Um, it actually, it, it's got a good color to it um, because I was really wanting a more saturated green and it does have a more saturated green, but man, uh, it just, it's got too much of a satin finish. Um, you can see it shining. You know, if I tilt it and try to give you a bit of the color, um, maybe I can get that to go away because it is a good green. It's a good kind of more saturated green but uh, just too much, too much reflectivity for my taste. Um, so again, a couple of comparisons here. I've got an old muck boot, all right? So you can see that the, uh, the dark greens at the top are pretty close to the bottom there. And then the light green uh, is probably a more desaturated version of a green. So that army green really is a, it's a drab. It's, a, it's not got a lot of saturation in it, but those dark greens, are going to give you a pretty good dark green. I've also got a piece of the stock that's green. Now this is where that Krylon would have matched this a lot better, um, but it's just, again, too much reflectivity. So um, that green, none of these match really well. Like I said, that Krylon would match decently, except for, again, the sheen. And then for the, uh, the Sitka camo, again, none of them are going to match this particular green. This is a pretty uh, vibrant green. It's more of an early season camo um, for that green, but uh, you know, just a quick comparison there. And then I've got some Realtree Max XT. This is, this is a balaclava um, that I actually got as a gift for whenever it's cold. And that's where these dark muted greens and this light green actually matches a lot of this pretty well. So if you're trying to do real tree or something like that, these are going to work pretty well. But if you're working with a camo that's pretty modern, 
um, that has some of the brighter greens that may not work as well. So anyway, uh, that's going to be it. Like I said, I just wanted to give you a good color reference so that you could see kind of uh, what to expect out of the colors on these things. Um, again, I really do like the Rust-Oleum paints. They, they do a good job of being uh, basically no reflections at all. Um, pretty good colors. I think they come in a pack where you get most of the camo colors. I don't know um, if all of the, the colors I've got from Rust-Oleum, the, the black, the brown, the khaki, and the two greens all come in it, but I think they might. Um, so they're pretty good. Uh, do be aware, though, if you're painting plastic, uh, even though these things say that they bond to plastic, in my experience, they don't bond extremely well to nylon or polypropylene. So depending on what you're actually painting, again, some of the miniatures are polystyrene and stuff like that. They're probably going to work fine. But a lot of uh, accessories and stuff are made out of polypropylene and nylon. Some of the things that are more durable, uh, it doesn't stick very well. So you really probably want to use an adhesion promoter if you're gonna be painting plastics. So uh, that's just my advice. And again, I hope this is useful for you. If you got any questions, comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks.